Hi everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and this is your look ahead updated on Friday the 16th of January. Thanks again for watching. Um, if you want to forecast for the next couple of days, then check out our fast forecast. In this forecast we look ahead um, for the next several days and the next few weeks as well. Now, of course, we've got our story in place of colder weather coming through during next week and the risk of some sleet and snow as well. Um, but what you're going to find is people now jumping around over various different model runs because um, the GFS model, for example, updates four times a day, as do several others. Um, and what you're going to find when we get to this sort of distance away, um, about sort of four or five days away from when an event takes place, what you tend to find is that the model has difficulty pinning down the detail. Its algorithms just aren't quite there in enough detail to pin things down. So when it does, it then goes with that story. And what it can do from run to run is uh, knock each run out. So it can look as if each run isn't following the previous run in its detail. So what we do here is step back now and say, OK, the story we've got is for cooler weather next week, the risk of some sleet and snow. And if that changes, then so be it. If it's a major change in milder conditions, of course, that's something that um, we'll let you know about. But otherwise, the detail going into that, it's really difficult to pin down. And I'm sure if you look over various forums, over various discussions, there will be people jumping around on each run of the model. Remember that models are there just to assist the forecasters. So just to assist you as a forecaster, the models are there. It still comes down to the forecaster to make a call as to what the atmosphere is likely to do, using his experience, taking a look at what's gone on in the past, and then making a call based on that, whilst taking a lot of what the model says into account, but still, ultimately, it's the forecaster's decision. So, how would you how would you go about it? Well, this is a perfect example, actually, as to um, how the forecasting game in the medium term runs, because this is a comparison of the Canadian, the GFS, the ECMWF, and the UK Met Office uh, models. And this is the chart for next Tuesday. So for exactly the same time, midnight Monday going into Tuesday. You see how the um, overall pattern from the Canadian from the uh, GFS, from the ECMWF and from the UK Met is to put low pressure towards the northwest of Scotland. It's got a trough at 500 millibars in here, look, on every one of those. But more than that, you just can't say at the moment. And that low looks as if it's tracking its way south eastwards, exactly where it goes is Tricky to say, but it's going to be tracking southeastwards. On the northern side of that low, there's going to be wintry conditions as it comes through. On the southern side, it's going to be milder conditions. And so we have to talk about the risk of wintry weather arriving, but trying to pin down exactly where that's going to be, it's going to be very difficult. Now, as a forecaster, when I look at that chart, um, at that set of charts, what I'm immediately seeing is the potential for this feature here, for the trough, to be cut off, OK? All of those, Canadian, GFS and UK Met, all were already showing the potential for that cutoff. ECMWF, not quite so, but there's some things going on in here, but that's probably more to do with the increased uh, resolution of the ECMWF, trying to pick out and some stuff there. But it can be that it tries to be too clever with itself, so it almost trips over itself in the detail it's trying to put down. So the overall um, impression in my mind, the overall story formulated in my mind, is that this feature is going to be cutting off. So now if we head 24 hours later, this is Wednesday. So this is Wednesday 21st next week. Again, Canadian, GFS, ECMWF, UK Met Office. And look, you can see there what's happening. We've got a cut-off low being shown here, look on the Canadian. Similar on the GFS. ECMWF, again, not making too much of it. There's something down here, um, but it, it tries to keep, look, the main trough towards the northwest there. UK Met Office, where you can see that the connection there between the UK Met and the ECMWF, it has a similar sort of story going in the halfway house. We've got a big trough down here, look, and it's trying to get that as a cut-off feature, but not doing it so much as the Canadian and as the uh, GFS. Now, in this sort of situation, one of the better models actually is the Canadian. So this idea of this cutoff, OK, we're picking up on the Canadian seeing that and on the uh, GFS Ensemble seeing it, possibly the UK Met. But these two here fall in line with my experience as to what happens to these features. And then if we go on for 24 hours, here's where we are on Thursday, the 22nd. We've got cutoff feature down here on the Canadian 
and on the GFS. An interesting look. ECMWF has kind of got its act together and said, well, actually, yeah, I can see that being a cut-off feature. And the UK Met Office, not really going for it. It's there at the surface, but it hasn't got a cut-off feature at 500 millibars. Now, as this cut-off comes in, of course, it brings in the northeasterlies, comes round the back of that low. It's Wednesday into Thursday that we look at the risk of catching some rain. But what happens behind that cut-off? It's the ridge that we need to be following here because all models look are building in that ridge idea. Now, what tends to happen here is that the ridge builds through. It connects into the uh, high over Scandinavia, but don't forget that's pumping in warm air all the time here. So what it's trying to do is to, it can have the effect of weakening that Scandinavian high, which then allows for the high over Scandinavia just to weaken, to get squeezed as we've seen here on Friday the 23rd of January. So the high look is getting squeezed in here as this warm air is pumping through aloft into the high. So it's allowing that to be squeezed. But notice the ECMWF keeps this cutoff feature as the main feature, brings in this next trough across the top of um, that cutoff low and kills off the ridge. So it's getting rid of the ridge completely. So this is the story that's trying to be picked up from the models at the moment. And out of these, you, you kind of have to say, well, the more realistic is the Canadian and the GFS. They're the two that seem to pick out this idea of the cutoff low first in the Mediterranean. And therefore that may well have a knock on effect then as to how reliable the ECMWF operational is just at the moment. It's really important that you don't just get pulled this way and that by various different runs of the models and what people are saying to you on the, fo on the uh, forums. Stand back, look at the weather pattern, put yourself in the position of the weather machine and imagine the way that pattern could evolve and then think back to previous patterns and how they evolved. Remember, it's not the weather you want. It's the weather that the, that the atmosphere is going to be bringing to us. So however much you wish for cold and you wish for snow and you want it to be there, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the game that the atmosphere wants to be playing with you. Uh, anyway, of course, it's Friday, so it's JMA day as well. Um, this is the Jap Japanese Meteorological Agency um, forecast for the next 30 days. This is week one, so this takes us up to uh, next Thursday. So this goes up to the 22nd of January. And what this one's showing us is a big ridge building in the Atlantic above normal heights. There's the trough look across Europe. So it's certainly seeing that colder weather as well, coming in on a north or northeasterly down through the country. So this again just builds that idea of next week being a wintry week. And then week two, from the 23rd of January going up to the 29th of January. This one, look, puts the trough to the west. There's the ridge. There's our trough feature. It's hinting at some sort of cutoff in here. Exactly the same. But it's trying to get this ridge look across the top, as we saw there on the GFS and on the um, Canadian. So it's trying to pull this in, weaken the high out here, pull us into a northeasterly, try and get the high into northern parts of Scotland. So it keeps the east and the south cold, but gets rid of that cold spell up towards the north. And then weeks three and four, so this is running from the 30th of January through to the 13th of um, February. Um, this then does manage to break the trough through. It gets the trough back in. Now, this is a pattern that I can see developing quite easily. We get the trough through here as an elongated feature. The ridge gets pushed down south because as that warm air comes in across the top, what will be happening is that behind it here, we're getting colder air coming in all the time. So imagine on this northern side of the ridge here, that's just being cooled off all the time with that flow coming into the back of it. So what happens is the ridge collapses away eventually and we get that trough feature building into place. And that's exactly what could happen uh, during weeks three to four, taking us into the middle part of February. That would bring us into a cold west to northwesterly flow. And um, at times, yes, there could be some wintry conditions around. But I still think the core of the cold is probably going to be during the course of next week. OK, uh, I think I've witted on for long enough. 
So I'm going to leave you with that for now. But whatever you're doing, don't forget that um, we will email you and let you know when this forecast is updated. Uh, just use the email address that you can see on the screen now. And you can follow us on Twitter at WXWeb. So that's at WXWeb. And whatever you're doing, have a great day. Keep the sun shining and bye for now.